In the last 12 months, more companies, more car companies have gone bankrupt than what did in the previous five years combined. Today, we're going to dive into a critical question. Which auto companies are at risk of bankruptcy in this rapidly shifting EV landscape? And we're going to use data to analyze so that we can take away the emotion behind the different brands. Before we get into it, please subscribe if you haven't already. And also you can support us as a YouTube member. You get access to some videos that are not on the main channel. I'll put a link in the description. Thank you. Now to answer this question, we'll use the Altman Z-Score, a powerful financial tool developed in 1968 by Professor Edward Altman to predict a company's likelihood of going bankrupt within two years. This combines five key financial ratios like profitability, leverage, and liquidity into a single score. Below 1.8 signals very high risk. 1.8 to 3 that's a gray area. And above 3.0 means a company is financially safe. I can tell you though now, there's not many companies in the world that are above 3.0. Alongside macro access reports and the Petrosky F score, which assess fundamentals like debt and earnings, will uncover the hidden dangers behind major automakers and what they're facing this year and over the next 18 to 24 months. Stay tuned to see which companies are on the brink. To determine which auto companies are at risk of bankruptcy, according to the Altman Z score, as of May 30, 2025, we need to analyze recent financial data and apply the Z score framework while also considering macro access reports and the Petrosky F score as per, as per what most economists would be actually looking at. The Altman Z score predicts bankruptcy risk for publicly traded companies with scores below 1.8, as I said before, indicating a very high risk distress zone. So, first, number one, the most at risk company, major company, is Nissan. Nissan is already at huge risk, as discussed previously here on the channel. If you want to see my full 20 minute video showing why Nissan is predicted to go bankrupt within two years, then I'll put a link in the description below. Macro Access reports a 100% probability of bankruptcy for Nissan within two years. With an Altman Z score below 1.8, given its 4.7 billion loss in 2024, declining sales and high debt load, the Petrosky F score, likely zero to three, reflects weak fundamentals, negative profits, high leverage, and no chance of growth. Web data from 2019 showed Nissan's Z-score at 1.38, already in the distress zone, and its financial situation has only gotten worse since then, with a 700 million restructuring cost in 2025, 0.5% operating margin, seven factories closed, 20,000 staff fired. Nissan is clearly in the distress zone with a very high bankruptcy risk. They are in first place. Shockingly, by the way, I should mention this does not include any Chinese automakers. This is just all the major automakers that most people know about. I'll have a separate video including those companies very soon. Second, Ford Motor Company. Ford's Altman Z score for the quarter ending June 30, 2024 was 1.05 per Discover CI, placing it firmly in the distress zone below 1.8. This score has declined from an average of 1.13 since 2010, reflecting deteriorating financial health. Ford's 2024 financials show challenges, major ones. Q3 2024 revenue was 46 billion, but the company reported a 2.2 billion loss in its EV division, Ford Model E, offset by, prof by profits in its commercial and internal combustion segments. Here's the thing though, how much money do you think Ford's gonna be making in 2030 from internal combustion. Total assets were 274 billion claimed. Those factories are not worth anywhere near their paper, their paper claims though. Liabilities at 228 billion. Retained earnings are 31 billion, but high debt and EV losses are straining Ford's liquidity. Macro Axis hasn't provided a specific bankruptcy probability for Ford, but a Z score of 1.05 does suggest 
high risk. Does that mean Ford will go bankrupt within two years? Almost certainly not. In the long term though, five to 10 years, Ford is at very, very high risk. The Petrosky F score, likely three to four based on mixed profitability, positive internal combustion profits, negative EV profits, high debt and declining margins indicates moderate distress. Ford's focus on hybrids, up 38% in sales, may mitigate some risk in the short term, but in the long term will create a very difficult situation. Its EV struggles and its tariff exposures, 1.5 billion in 2024, and much more than that in 2025, reflect heightening concerns for Ford. And it's probably one of the reasons why Ford's price to earnings ratio appears really good value. You think, why is Ford so undervalued? Doesn't make sense. Well, it kind of does. Number three, General Motors. Feels like I'm picking on the United States, but guys, this information is actually from artificial intelligence, chat GPT enterprise. GM's Altman Z score in 2019 was 1.09, already in the distress zone, and recent financials suggest continued risk. For Q3 2024, General Motors reported 48.8 billion in revenue and 3 billion in net income. But its EV division faces losses, 1.7 billion in 2024, and an $890 million investment in V8 engine production, plus massive investments in hydrogen production signals a retreat from EV focus, which is bad news. Total assets were 281 billion. If you consider them assets, that is, many of factories that automakers own are simply abandoned at this point in time, and they can only sell them for a fraction of their book assets. Liabilities are $209 billion. Retained earnings at 55 billion is a good, is a good number, but high debt and slowing EV demand in the United States are concerns. A Z score around 1.1 to 1.3, given stagnant fundamentals, shows that there is some concern for General Motors. And there is some concern for General Motors because they're becoming a very continent specific company. Their sales in China are free falling, crashing. And that traditionally is a place where General Motors have made a lot of money. We're talking billions of dollars every year. But last year, Ford make, made a huge loss in China. Macro Axis doesn't provide a current probability of bankruptcy, but GM's Petrosky F score around four to five. Positive profits, but declining margins and high leverage suggests gray zone risk. GM's reliance on internal combustion vehicles, 80% of sales and tariff costs, 1.2 billion, increased vulnerability, placing it in the distress zone with a moderate to high bankruptcy risk over the next five to 10 years. Next, Volkswagen. Now guys, at the end of this video, I'll show you some companies that are actually doing well and are not considered in any kind of distress whatsoever. They might be who you think and they might not be. Volkswagen Z-Score in 2019 was 1.14 in the distress zone, and its 2025 financials indicate some pretty serious ongoing challenges. Volkswagen reported a 70% profit drop in 2024, with sales down 9% in Q1 2025, and total assets at 580 billion euros, liabilities, massive liabilities of 420 billion euros, and retained earnings of 150 billion but a declining, and I mean rapidly declining profit margin, now around 6 to 7%, down from 18% signals some serious distress. So does the fact that the Volkswagen Group has more than $200 billion of debt. A Z-score around 1.2 to 1.5 is likely. It's below 1.8. Macro Axis doesn't provide numbers for a likely bankruptcy, but Volkswagen's Petrosky score Around three to four declining profits and high debt shows some serious gray zone risk. The Dieselgate fallout, 30 billion in fines, risk convictions on May 26 in 2025, slow, slowish EV adoption, and massive cash burn do mean that the Volkswagen Group are in pretty significant risk, but nowhere near the kind of risk that Nissan are. I think we can safely say that we can revisit this position. We can revisit these numbers next year to see where the Volkswagen Group Ford and General Motors are. But there's one other company that is possibly in even more distress, 
and not the Nissan, but the Ford General Motors and Volkswagen, and that is Stellantis. Stellantis currently faces severe financial strain with a 70% profit drop and 6 billion euros in cash burn in 2024. While exact Z-score data isn't available, it's 1.1 billion loss in the first half of 2024, massively declining US sales and high debt suggest a Z-score below 1.8. Total assets are claimed to be 200 billion euros. As I said before, though, those factories are not worth anywhere near claims and liabilities of 140 billion are an issue. Retain earnings at 40 billion euros Sounds good, but negative cash flow and restructuring costs are red flags. Macro access doesn't provide a specific probability, but a Petrosky F score of two to three negative profits and high leverage indicates distress. Solantis's pivot to hybrids and solid state battery investment may offer possibly some hope, but its current trajectory places it in the distress zone with a high bankruptcy risk. So you can see here, Really, you'd probably say, in my opinion, the most at-risk by far company is Nissan, followed by Stellantis, followed by Ford and Volkswagen, sort of equal third place together. Other companies who are actually doing well and who are doing really badly. Okay, there's two more companies here that have a very high probability of going bankrupt, nearly, nearly on par with Nissan. But first, who is doing well? One, Tesla. Yep, I know. There's a lot of negative news about them. There's a lot of, lot of media saying Tesla's doing horribly badly. But the truth is, Tesla's in a very, very good financial position. Tesla's Z-score is well above its legacy automaker rivals. Its 2024 financials show improvement. $25.2 billion in revenue in Q3, $2.2 billion net income, and a $1.1 trillion market cap. A Z-score above three places Tesla in the safe zone. Its Petrosky F-score, likely seven to eight, reflects strong profitability and growth with about 1.8 million EVs sold globally in 2024. Now, yes, it's likely Tesla sales will fall this year, but they have a massive, massive cash stockpile and they also have better full self-driving technology than any other car company in the world. Plus, they only make electric cars. Considering the entire planet will be either fully electric or high or, or, or plug-in hybrid, by 2035, Tesla is actually in a pretty good position. Next, BYD. BYD's financial health is actually quite good. With $28.2 billion in Q3 2024 revenue and a 50% stock gain year-to-date. A Z-score above 3.0 and a Petrosky F-score of 7 to 9 is likely putting it well and truly in the safe zone. And that's despite any dealer network issues it's been having lately. There's been some, uh, some uproar in China about these dealer issues and dealers having too much stock. But the truth is, BYD is actually in an enviable position. And keep in mind, they only make EVs and plug-in hybrids, which uh, means they don't really need to change production lines, build new factories, etc. They're also the world's second biggest battery manufacturer. Finally, the two companies that are also at extremely high risk along with Nissan. Both Rivian and Lucid have negative Z scores, meaning high distress. Rivian's $170 million gross profit in 2024 is offset by $5 billion in losses. Lucid's $3 billion cash burn suggests a Z score below 1.8. Petrosky F scores are likely two to three, confirming high bankruptcy risk for both Lucid and Rivian. Now, which one of these is in a worse position? Rivian has burned through more cash. And the company isn't more than 50% owned by Saudi Arabia. So yeah, more chance of Rivian going bankrupt than Lucid, even though Rivian, I believe, is the better company. Anyhow, the establishment narrative often focuses on traditional financial metrics, but the auto industry's shift to EVs complicates all of this analysis and really changes it. Companies like Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis, while distressed by Z-score standards, are pivoting to hybrids to offset EV losses. That may delay bankruptcy, 
but misaligns with global trends. 22 million electric cars will be sold in 2025. Nissan and Volkswagen's distress is exacerbated by their slow EV adoption. Nissan's ARIA sales are lagging, and Volkswagen's 10.5% EV share in the UK and Europe is underwhelming. Conversely, Tesla and BYD are thriving due to e their EV focus, highlighting the market's electrification trajectory. Now, of course, so far this year, Tesla's EV sales are falling, no question. But Tesla is likely to pivot, and now that Elon Musk has quit the Doge department and left the government, things might be able to stabilize. The Z-Score's reliance on historical data does miss qualitative factors like innovation, Rivian's new R2 platform, which could mitigate risk despite poor scores. Macro accesses high bankruptcy probabilities for distressed firms like Nissan, Lucid, and Rivian based on negative E-scores aligned with their financials. But government interventions, the UK's $1.4 billion gift to Nissan and partnerships, e.g. Volkswagen's uh, tie-up with Rivian, could alter outcomes. But Nissan is so far under the water and drowning that I don't think even the UK's $1.4 billion gift will save them from the inevitable. So how do we conclude, what, what can we take away from all this? Well, besides Nissan, Ford with a Z-score of 1.05, General Motors around 1.1 to 1.3, Volkswagen, similar to General Motors, Stellantis around 1.3 as well, and Rivian and Lucid with negative Z-scores are at risk according to the Altman Z-score, with macro access likely assigning high bankruptcy probabilities to both Rivian and Lucid, and Petrosky F-scores 2 to 5 reflecting very weak fundamentals across that group. Tesla and BYD are in the safe zone, according to the analysts. Benefiting from strong EV market positions, the distressed zone companies face high bankruptcy risks within two to three years. I wouldn't be recommending investing in Lucid, Rivian, or Nissan anytime soon. In fact, I wouldn't invest in any of these companies at all, except for Tesla and BYD. If trends persist, strategic shifts or external support could delay these numbers, but they can't delay it forever. The outcome, I would say, is fairly inevitable considering the numbers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.